Welcome, this is an auto -gefühl review of the Renault Coleos. It sits on the platform of the Nissan X-Trail or Nissan Rogue and is even built as a Samsung QM5 in Asia. Pretty interesting. Here we are focusing on the Renault Coleos and deliver you all details in exterior, interior and driving experience in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Looking at the front, I think they managed to create a very elegant design with floating lines, also with a very friendly face. And very interesting here, the intense middle trim level. I love to show you mid trim levels also. You do not have to go for the highest trim level that the full LED headlights are included already right now here, pretty cool. And a very interesting, very prominent LED daytime running light, which is also activated right here. I think also with the blue color, Thomas blue would be a little bit brighter blue, um, but this blue here, it was called azure, like you know, azure, you, de depending on the language, or you call it azurite, or however you call it, but you get the picture. So they always have different names for the blue color. I think it's a very uh, elegant one as well. And then it was a little silver contrast in the lower part. What do you think about the design? 4 meters 67 or 15 foot 3 is the total length of the Coleos. So it is in this compact SUV segment. You know, not the smallest one, so to say. For example, you know, Volkswagen Tiguan, then transition to the Tiguan Allspace, uh, Skoda Kodiak, that would be the competitors, depending on how you compare price and length. I think also in the side profile, they have done a very interesting job. Look at how the blue contrasts here to the chrome elements, also with the door handles. The door handles, by the way, we really know that from the Nissan X-Trail. Then 17-inch rims, it starts. Those ones are the option 19-inch rims in a two-color scheme. Overall, it looks very decent also, again, with the chrome detail right there. Round shape, which still divides a little bit in light and shadow at the side profile. And then more foam follows function in the rear part. Little shoulder accentuation, but other than that, it shall have a lot of room on the inside. Will this be the case? We'll soon find out. And finally, to the rear, where they again have a very characteristic LED daytime running light shape. Wow, this is really a wow effect, and everyone recognizes this vehicle on the road. I think very well done. Um, some Audi style we see here as well, where this lower um, loading sill cover also already appears in this aluminum look here in the outside part. Also a beautiful feature. Well, in the lower part, this, I mean, mm. I would call them design elements. I wouldn't exactly say they try to be fake exhaust. I think in the way, I mean, if they just want to do it in that way, why not? From the very far, it looks maybe a little bit like fake exhaust, but as I said, I think they do not even pretend to be. So um, overall, I think I'm really impressed by the design. It's the most beautiful Renault SUV ever, I think. Or what do you? The hood here nice with hydraulic struts and engines either for Europe 1.6 liter diesel, 130 horsepower with front wheel drive, or this one here, the two liter diesel with some 177 horsepower and all wheel drive, optional with a CVT automatic transmission as well. And in China, you also get a 2 liter and 2.5 liter petrol engine. This one is Euro 6 compliant, this diesel. However, they do not use the SCR cleaning yet. And I wonder how could, how could they still get the Euro 6 clearance? Well, it's not the most current Euro 6 D temp. So yeah, you're not Euro 5. But still, I think they should also reduce, introduce the SCR cleaning because you maybe also know that the Renault and the Nissan diesels are not pretty famous for being very clean. They're actually quite high in the emissions, one of the key problems of this vehicle.
this is the car key. You get this key card basically um, open and close. But you can also use the keyless entry here with this button. And you can also see that the side mirrors flip in and out. And um, you have to press the button also again to unlock the vehicle. Then at the inside of the doors, what I really like is that they use soft touch materials here, also at the armrest very comfortable to put your elbow here then they have this uh, fake wood inlet yeah okay it's not real wood but um, it looks quite nice why not you can also fit bigger bottles right here and it reminds us of the Nissan x because the window levers are actually the same at the interior you can see then this compact Renault steering wheel I think it has a good size also some quite, quite nice details because here it's also a little bit softer materials than leather red a look like on the top part also here in the lower parts another the red look it's really nice details also the heated steering wheel function great for winter is in the lower part here and you can change the all-wheel drive to four-wheel drive lock or to two-wheel drive or just leave it in auto um, that's what you usually would do in the lower part then you can see here with the seats this is the intense middle trim level and we have fabric on the inside and some leatherette for the visuals on the outside. A great and perfect mix. Keeps you warm in winter and also cold in summer times and looks quite good. So I think they've done a good job here. Also when you continue up further with the seat, some, um, you can hear the leatherette cover, also sustainable and then also with a lot of support here in the shoulder region. Let's get inside. It's a very easy shoe tip. Easy entry, you have this upright seating position you expect from an SUV and it feels already quite grown up. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 and there's still some headroom left. Although we have the panoramic roof mounted, you always lose some headroom when it is mounted. You can adjust the steering wheel in all ways. I would like if it could be put a little bit higher, um, but I mean, I'm quite okay with that. So um, would have been nice but I can still find a good driving position right here. And again, those seats give enough support as well. And you have this upright position, which is also good for your, uh, for your lower back. Manual seat control, pump it up y'all. And also to the front then, right here. And the back part of the seat, so pretty easy to control actually. And then you can also say, you do not necessarily need the all electric controls for this one. And also spacious enough for everyone. Also the side here, when you, you know, hit your knee against the side here, it's a soft cover. So I think they really paid attention to a lot of details here. I'm quite impressed by that. Now the interior overview. Again, some um, soft materials there. Well, here they are not entirely hard, but not they're entirely soft, something in between, I would say. <laughs> then this decor wood style element right here. Again, I think you can really do that. Then base, it would be a seven inch screen. This one here's the optional 8.7 inch screen. And uh, this with all the extras brings also the price for the car up from 31,000 base to 43,000 and for this whole vehicle with all bigger diesel, all wheel drive and all the interior features. You see here that the climate functions is still manual for hot and colder. Also two zone AC, which is one of the options, seat heating. Here with the infotainment system, you can connect your phone with a cable and then have the Apple CarPlay or also the normal Bluetooth function is available. Then you can um, change the when strengths. You have to do that one here still in the screen, just the temperature you can control in the lower part. And other interesting things are also that you can change the style, for example, here from assistant system and here style, for example, for the instruments, you have different styles than for the left instruments and also different styles for this display um, like this you can very well read stuff then but it looks super weird to be honest uh, so not sure if you really want to go for that but the gps will always look the same like this and then you can actually quite well browse browse in that one big step forward to the old systems uh, we know for sure instruments are digital you can see the digital speed also in the middle part on the right side then the fuel status and by the way you can see the check engine light when the engine is running and then it appears that's a problem when just the ignition is on then it's no problem it's just showing that the light is working and on the right upper part there that's very interesting this is where the all-wheel drive distribution will appear 
I will tell you more about it when we drive the car. So the lower middle console and the front we have some ambient light. <laughs> I can also shut it off like this. Um, 12 volt power supply. I would have loved a USB port in the very front. Then the six speed manual gearbox here with the electric uh, park brake. Then this way you activate the cruise control. This way the speed limiter. Then we have got bottle holders, but they are not really adaptive. That's also something that could have been improved for sure. Then this armrest here with a leatherette cover right here is actually quite fixly attached. Also good from the build quality. And then when we look inside, we have then here the two USB ports. You can put your smartphone in there and can also charge it. So this panoramic roof, first of all, there's this sunshade, very important for hot times. And then it leaves a lot of light in the interior right there. And it's not only a panoramic roof, you can also open it and then you get some fresh air. So pretty nice feature for sure. Unless you are in a super hot climate, then of course it isolates even more when you just have the plain roof. And you have to let the engine run, maybe here on, on the microphone. It's not possible just with the ignition. Now let's get in the rear. One thing, by the way, that's a weird sound, isn't it? So seems pretty whole from the inside, this door. But what is great, then again, from the build quality, that even in the rear, we have soft touch materials at the inside of the doors, and that's very rare these days. Even when the fake wood inlets, I think I really like them. You know, why not? Also the door hands from the inside, and also soft and it this part of the inside of the doors. So a lot of good things we find here too. Also, great leg room still left. So they have a good package, a lot of room for your whole family, headroom wise, and still fit a head, hand over my head here. Again, if you want some more headroom, then leave out the panoramic roof. Overall, I sit very comfortable here and also upright in the rear really a very good result and if you compare it to the x-trail i feel that i would not be sitting that high than in the x-trail i think then isofix at the outset of the seats same fabric leatherette mix here too and then you can flip the seats from here um, you cannot vary how you want the angle it's just like either fixed or released and that's it that's maybe something that could have been improved. Then armrest here with cup holders. And we have two more USB supplies also for the rear passengers. That's also a good thing. So overall, I think the most important thing is here, we really have a lot of room in here and I would really appreciate that. So let's take a look at the trunk. Electric tailgate we have here. You can also open it with the key. That's also possible. Then you can almost stand on the head. I think it's quite okay. This cover here is a little bit wobbly in this case, has does not have rails on the side. But then, wow, you can very well use this trunk. Also good from the build quality here, pretty cool. Just some more space below that one. And then you have this even loading still here again, very well done. So a lot of features I really like with this vehicle. Also then here, this transition, you can very well sit on here as well for doing picnic or so. Pretty fancy. And then you can also release the seats from here with those levers right there. One and two on the other side. And here we go. And it, you see it raises just a little bit. You can push them flatter just a little bit more maybe. But yeah, that's it. I mean, the seats are pretty thick, so you can do so much more. And of course, you could also remove this whole cover here. But overall, I think, very good result. You can fix some stuff here. Also um, pretty good for tension belts, for example, and another 12 volt power supply also in the rear. And finally, the child safety. Oh, wait, wait. Before the child safety test, let's just put the trolley in here. There you can see the size then right there. Now this, and you can see that you really have a lot of room in there. And finally then the child safety test. Let's take a look how sensitive it is. Perfect. Very well done. Nothing can happen to your kids with this one.
welcome to the driving part, aka Thomas's driving lounge, here with the 2 liter diesel and the Renault Coleos. So first of all, the first acceleration with the menu gearbox here, 6 speed. Well, the power of the diesel is really good. So 10.7 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour and you don't have to push the throttle very hard. It's quite easy to drive. Uh, the manual gearbox actually could be a little smoother to use, so sometimes you have to push the gears in really a lot, so um, it feels a little bit, you know, as you would have some more resistance there. Steering-wise, it is very easy to steer, very soft, so that's of course helpful when you're you know, searching in the parking lots for something. Um, but then again, there's also no feel in the steering wheel. So when I'm doing like this, there's no feedback whatsoever on the road. Also when I'm on the motorway, 80 kilometers an hour in a corner, it feels exactly the way as the car would be standing still. So there's no difference. So I think it would be better if they could if they could give us some more feedback for the car. Listen to the turning indicator signal. I think it's a little bit weird, isn't it? It sounds a little bit like in an uh, in a, in a 80s song or something like that. A little bit old school, but it's of course just personal preference. What is important with this vehicle is you got this upright seating position. The overview is actually quite okay. Also to the sides. It's not a small vehicle. Um, it doesn't feel too big to me now. And you know, remember that the platform was from the Nissan x -Trail. And you do feel those similarities. So the funny thing is, I didn't really remember before I looked it up and then I drove the car for the first time and thought, mm, it really feels a little bit like a Nissan x -Trail. And then I looked it up again and said, ah, yeah, that's why they share that same platform. So the suspension, the same with the extra, is a little bit rough at times. When you're going over some potholes and stuff, you hear that maybe also on camera, and you also feel that. Mm, you don't get back pain from it, it's no problem, but it's not too comfortable when the road is not really even. In general, from the setup, I think they found a good compromise there. It's of course no sporty SUV by any means. Comparable again to the extra rather on a, on a soft turn. So when you go right and left. <laughs> Kai even says, Thomas, what are you doing there? Stop that. I don't like it. <laughs> That's funny, right? With the, those assistance systems you have all over the vehicles nowadays. So again, no feeling really in the steering wheel, but the suspension is not so soft that the car would be shake, shaking up, so that's still quite okay. You know, in the city, about just over 50 kilometers an hour, actually quite silent in here, noise insulation wise, so that's good. It also adds to this comfortable feeling. And somehow, you know, with the bigger screen and some, you know, material tweaks they have here, and remember, we're just in the middle trim level here, this car feels a little bit more premium to drive than the Nissan X-Trail. There are some similarities, but if you ask me just instantaneously after driving it now, which one would you go for, the X-Trail or the Coleos here, I think I will really pick the Coleos. I said that the diesel has enough power, but then again, there's also the consumption. So you have to at least count with seven and a half liters on 100 kilometers, and that's of course too much for diesel um, of that size also and, and of, the, of the weight of the car and it can even go up if you drive a little bit faster um, sometimes maybe two, two to eight liters or something and that's definitely too much and was also one of the major weaknesses of the x-trail for sure so standing still it's a start stop function and also some more time to discover what the car is all about for example here behind the steering wheel we got this control knob you really have to see it for once when you turn the steering wheel sideways because when you have it like this 
you cannot see and then while driving you should not try to discover what's there. You know, it's to increase the volume, you just rather feel it, look straight ahead and feel that you increase the volume or uh, turn it down again. So that's, that's the key then here. Look to the mirrors. Actually a good overview, we have this split at the outer part actually is giving you a different angle, but at the same time we also have this option, this assistance system for the blind spot monitor here. I'm soon, soon able to show you that as well when someone is overtaking us then now. Always a problem to <laughs> find a good look here at the, at the traffic light that seems to be off now. Sometimes you have to trust the other traffic participants. So here we go. You do hear also that it is a diesel. Uh, unfortunately here in Europe we only get the diesel. You know, they could have also offered, for example, this uh, new petrol engine they have in the Nissan Qashqai. I said the same with the X-Trail. Um, I was very satisfied with the petrol engine in the Qashqai. It was actually consuming less than the diesel, strangely. You know. Here also with the X-Trail and the Coleos, with the all-way drive, of course, always takes some consumption. However, most of the time, this car is running front-wheel drive only. I can also see it, and then I think it's quite nice. Usually we know that from Porsche or something that they offer this feature in the instruments to show you what is the all-wheel drive distribution. And so when you just let it roll, as I do right now, it says 100% front, zero to the rear. But the harder you accelerate, and it would be even more extreme if it would have slippery surface now in the front, the more power is also transported to the rear wheels with the clutch. And physically, it's just possible to deliver 50% to the rear. It's, you know, when you transport it from the front to the rear, you cannot get then more than 50% to the rear. And for example, if I shift down the gear and push the throttle a little bit more, it says just 5% because I'm still running. When I'm starting from zero, for example, and then accelerate harder, then the car also tells me that, for example, 30% of the torque is directed to the rear wheels. So usually the manufacturers always say that those systems here help you to save fuel. Um, sometimes it's true, sometimes not. Mm, you know, we did some testing, for example, with the, um, with the Volkswagen Tiguan and the Škoda Kodiak comparing the two-wheel drive to the four-wheel drive models. And there the surplus of consumption was just about 0.5 liters maximum. And I think that's quite okay then. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it is with this one here. So overall, so far, we soon get to the motorway part. But I can tell you so far from city driving, it's a pretty comfortable ride. We can also confirm that the seats work very well. They hold you tight enough, still they offer you enough room to move around with the upright seating position. It's also good for your lower back especially. I could very well imagine going on a longer trip with this vehicle. So that's definitely your strength and it's also not very complicated to use. You know, I'm not a fan of the infotainment system, but since they have the CarPlay connection and now, I would probably mainly use that. They still also have the climate control, I can very well control while driving, so not everything uh, is just put in the screen as we have with some cars. So overall it conveys a positive driving feel for sure. And with the downsides, high consumption and also suspension, sometimes a little bit rough. Now here again, not sure if you hear that on camera, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> So, and that, that could have, you know, we know cars also in this segment that are better suspension-wise nowadays. I think they could do a little bit better right there. But overall, it really uh, is a good alternative in the segment also driving-wise. Again, I prefer this maybe even a little bit more to the X-Trail. But if I would close my eyes then and not see, you know, some worthier materials and stuff, maybe I couldn't really tell the difference driving wise between the Coleos and the X-Trail. Maybe the steering is even just a little bit better. I mean, it's somewhat also a little bit newer car, so they had some more time to tweak, you know, some details and things. 
pretty interesting. And I would also be looking forward how this one here uh, appears as a uh, Samsung vehicle. I told you earlier in, in Asia, it's also a very, very funny fact, you know, that the very same car is basically sold under so many different brands. But other corporations do that as well, and it's just a logical choice to save money. And overall, you can also say that customers profit from this strategy because the more you build a car, the more it goes into mass production, the better a car usually gets. And the, this basically accounts for all of the different components. So now again from first gear, 40% oh, even to the rear wheel stand when I really accelerate a little bit faster. So you see that then the all-wheel drive is also using um, more of its capacities. And we'll soon get to the motorway and show you the acceleration power right there and also how it performs, performs sound insulation wise there. You know, in the roundabout, well, it's not tilting too much. It's not necessarily super fun to drive, but I wouldn't say it's too boring. So, I mean, it's still okay. And the primary thing of this vehicle, of course, you have a lot of room in the rear. And considering the package, as I shown you earlier, was quite good. And you're driving with your family, for example, all the time. I think you can really be quite happy with that. The fourth gear, the last time we're soon now leaving the city. We also have an acceleration that goes a little bit uphill. That's always good to test then the engines, if they may be lack some power in this case then but you know with the diesels they also have a lot of torque then and if you ask me if the smaller diesel would also work hmm, i think that could work yeah i mean it depends on if you're driving with a lot of load but if you're not driving so often with, with a lot of load you know, maybe use a trailer or something the smaller diesel could maybe also work and Again, as this one is not the consumption king. Now I was, you know, rather conservative, could push it down rather to seven liters. Earlier when I was pushing it a little bit harder on the motorway, it went up to eight. So I think something between seven and eight. Funny, by the way, also there's a small leaf displayed. And it diminishes when I'm pushing the throttle harder. Also interesting. So now third gear going uphill, 60, 70. 80. That's quite good, right? So no problems about there. And then now third gear 70 to 100. Plop. Here we go. So I think you can easily live with that. Now at 100, let's go fifth gear and then sixth gear. So driving 100, uh, just below 2000 RPM. Sound insulation is still quite okay, I guess. So 100 is still a good travel speed. So I wouldn't be annoyed by the sound insulation right now. I mean, in most markets, people don't drive much faster anyway. Just been to France a couple of days and maximum speed in motorways there, 130. Most of the time you get 110, for example, as well. Some even don't max out that limit. So just in Germany, well, <laughs> sometimes, for example, here is also just 100 max speed. Not everyone really uh, relies on that. But more and more the limits are, of course, introduced because the roads are getting crowded and crowded. I also have good, uh, good feeling now at higher speeds in the corner. That's actually not a problem at all. The diesel gets a little bit louder as well. Now we're getting off and this is always uh, a very interesting corner because you drive it a little bit faster and then there's a different surface and you get pushed to the yeah get pushed to the side a little bit but the car handled that pretty well because you know there's just a different surface than running across the road and sometimes a car is set to you know just a little bit sidewards but that was actually quite well managed so talked about the pros and the cons of the car also while driving i hope you enjoyed it with me here maybe the last comment here 
we also have a cruise control here inbuilt, just a normal one. You set it here on the steering wheel on the left side. And of course, you have to brake yourself here at the next traffic light. Shall we race this golf guy here? Oh, well, there's a lady inside. <laughs> Some racing here with the Coleos. Maybe we can show them the uh, blind spot monitor when we're getting overtaken again. Because I, because I really, I mean, I usually keep the speeds here. Oh, so she's in a hurry, obviously. I'm sorry, can't keep up with the Coleos here. <laughs> it's not a GTI though. But maybe that petrol engine is somehow tuned, I don't know. Well, so we'll go some relaxing now in the countryside. Have a little bit longer drive with the car to get some more feeling for that. I think you already got a lot of impressions now from the driving and surely have a feeling for how it's like to drive this car. Now to our conclusion for today. Well, I think the exterior they managed to build a very elegant SUV, so good point in styling and of course I also like the blue interior a lot of great elements we see there nice seats very comfortable also a great fabric used there as well a lot of high build quality with soft touch materials and very clever solution they paid attention to the detail that you feel comfortable in the car infotainment system I'm not the biggest fan of it but since you can use also now the Apple CarPlay connection you can for example also primarily use this one but other than that a lot of room we find a good package so overall from all that is being offered a very good competitor in this segment i think also for the price it's not a real cheap car but it's definitely comparable with the competition then driving wise there we do find some weaknesses the suspension should be a little bit more comfortable also, the diesel is too high in the consumption and the emissions are too high. They have to have the SCR cleaning for the diesels or then offer a petrol engine, for example. But overall, I think still a very decent package they have here. And you know, for a family SUV or where you really need a lot of room, I think scored overall quite well here in our test. What do you think? Tell me your opinion in the comments and also tune in next time or to other reviews of the competitors of this car.